Welcome to the American Story. Stories about all the things that make America the country we know and love. Thank you for subscribing to the American Story podcast on your favorite podcast app, leaving a five-star review on that app, and sharing these stories with family, friends, and neighbors. Thanks to you, we are reaching more listeners every week. This is Chris Flannery with the Claremont Institute. I call this one Liberty for All. The Statue of Liberty has come to seem as much a part of America as the Grand Canyon. The oldest rocks of the Grand Canyon were formed by forces of nature some two billion years ago. And the Statue of Liberty, a project of mere mortals, has been around only since the end of the 19th century. But it came along and suddenly forever became part of the identity of the country it came into. When the millions of tourists from all over the world come to the south rim of the Grand Canyon, they are immediately struck with the natural wonder before them. The visual revelation inspires awe and meditative silence. When the millions of immigrants came on ships into New York Harbor in the decades after the Statue of Liberty was erected, they were struck by the human wonder the statue represented. As Frank Capra's illiterate Sicilian peasant father said to his six-year-old son when they arrived in 1903 and looked up at the great lady lifting a torch. It's the light of freedom. Remember that. Freedom. The original idea for the statue came from a Frenchman, one in an illustrious line of Frenchmen who were great friends of America and of liberty. The Marquis de Lafayette, when he was just 19 years old, fought alongside Washington in the American Revolutionary War. He was like a son to Washington. He remained such a devoted friend of the American cause for the rest of his life that he would name his son George Washington and have soil from Bunker Hill sprinkled on his grave in Paris. As Lafayette was dying, Alexis de Tocqueville was preparing his great book Democracy in America for publication. With that book, he meant to show France and the old world what they could learn about liberty from America and the New World. And the book has ever since been teaching Americans about their own country and about liberty. In Tocqueville's last years, another Frenchman, equally a friend to liberty and to America, was reaching prominent heights in French intellectual and political life. His name is not as familiar to Americans as Lafayette or Tocqueville, but it is a name worthy of remembrance. Édouard Laboulet. Among his many other accomplishments, he would become known as the father of the Statue of Liberty. Edouard René Lefebvre de Laboulet was born in 1811 and lived until 1883. He was a jurist, professor, and author and translator of many books, including Benjamin Franklin's autobiography. When he became professor of comparative law at the Collège de France in 1849, American history was not even in the curriculum. Laboulet chose the American Constitution as the subject for his inaugural lecture. As he later remembered, once appointed professor, my duty was clear. It was to make America known to France. His lectures on America became famous, crowded not only by French students, but Americans. Unlike Lafayette and Tocqueville, he never visited America. But his attachment was so warm that, as he said, he wanted his children to know that the first article of faith for a Frenchman is to love France, and the second is to love America. His deepest reason for loving both countries was the cause of liberty that was their great glory. Laboulet was an ardent admirer of Abraham Lincoln and supporter of the Union cause in the Civil War. The idea for the statue came to him in 1865, inspired by Union victory and especially by the passing of the 13th Amendment abolishing slavery, which gave the nation conceived in liberty a new birth of freedom. Laboulet wanted to give a statue representing liberty as a gift to America in honor of the coming 100th anniversary of the original birth of freedom in the Declaration of Independence. In 1875, with help from his friend, sculptor Frederick Auguste Bartholdi, he formed the Franco-American Union to raise support for the project. 
Bartholdi would design the statue, the French people would finance it, the American people would provide the pedestal, and the monumental sculpture would be called Liberty, Enlightening the World. From the torch in her uplifted right hand shines the light of liberty to all the world. From the seven rays of her crown radiates the life-giving light of the sun to the seven seas and the seven continents. Cradled in her left arm is a tablet with July 4th, 1776 inscribed in Roman numerals, the date on which a new nation was conceived in liberty. Her right foot rises from a broken shackle and at her left foot is a broken chain, the eternal reality of liberty breaking the bonds of slavery. Construction of the statue was completed in France in July 1884. It arrived in New York Harbor in 350 pieces in over 200 crates in June the next year. And President Grover Cleveland, with thousands of spectators looking on, dedicated the statue on October 28, 1886. The statue would hold out to the whole world the standard of liberty to which Edouard Laboulaye devoted his life's work and which, in Lincoln's words, should be familiar to all and revered by all, constantly looked to, constantly labored for, and even though never perfectly attained, constantly approximated, and thereby constantly spreading and deepening its influence and augmenting the happiness and value of life to all people of all colors everywhere. Seventeen years after the statue's official dedication, a poem on a bronze plaque would be mounted in the pedestal, whose last five lines were destined to become the most world-renowned lines of American poetry ever written. But that is a story for another occasion. Thanks for being part of the American story. This is Chris Flannery with the Claremont Institute. I encourage you to visit our website, theamericanstorypodcast.org, to learn more about these stories and how you might support them. That's theamericanstorypodcast.org.